فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Today بإذن الله الكريم We're going to بإذن الله الكريم Start the explanation of a book called Al-Manhaj Al-Haq written by Al-Imam Al-Allama Al-Faqih Al-Mufassir Al-Muhaqqiq Abdul Rahman Ibn Nasir Ibn Abdullah Ibn Nasir Ibn Sa'di Rahimahullah Ta'ala Wa Ghafara Lah The book that we're going to start is called Manhaj Al-Haq and it is written by Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasir Al-Sa'di Rahimahullah This book is lines of poetry. This book is lines of poetry. And it's of great benefit. And a lot of fawaid and um, a lot of khair that this book consists of that we're going to benefit from it, inshallah ta'ala. The benefits that we're going to take from it is which every one of us, and yalzamahu al-Muslim, that a believer sticks to and comes with is matters related to aqidah. Matters related to ibadah and also matters related to akhlaq and manners. And the author, rahimahullah, he wrote this book fi waqtin mubakkirin min hayatihi. He wrote this book at a very early stage of his life. He wrote this book when he was 26 and before. He was before 26 years of age because the Shaykh, rahimahullah, has a book called uh, Manzum, Manzuma called As-Sayru ila Allahi wa Dari al-Akhirah He has another book called As-Sayru ila Allahi wa Dari al-Akhirah And the author explained that book of his That book As-Sayru ila Allahi wa Dari al-Akhirah He himself The author Explained this book And he has an explanation of that book, on that book and within the explanation of that book, the author brought 14 lines of poetry from this book in the explanation, in the explanation of that book, Manduma to Sayru Ilallah wa Dari al-Akhirah. And I previously explained that book. And the author wrote at the end of at the ending of the explanation of the book Al Manduma to Sayru Ilallah wa Dari al-Akhirah. At the ending, the author wrote. فرغت منه ومن نسخه في ثلاث شعبان سنة ثلاث وثلاثين وثلاثمائة بعد بعد الألف. The author said, I finished writing this, I finished explaining this book on the third of شعبان, the year when it was one thousand three hundred and thirty-three. And the author was born one thousand three hundred and Seven. So how old was he when he finished the explanation of the book al Manduma to Sayyidu Ilallah wa Dari la Akhirah? He's 26 years of age. So he must, and he used, within the explanation, he used 14 lines of this book. So he was what? 26 or less than that. And that shows us, my beloved brothers and sisters, how these ulama were able to write at a very early stage in their lives. The reason they could do that is because, number one, they studied and they learned at a very early stage in their life. Knowledge at a very young age is like carving into a rock. The knowledge sticks and the knowledge stays. Knowledge when you're old, it's like writing on water. If you learn when you're young, the things that you learn, they stick to your head. And they really don't go off your head. But when you learn and you're old in age, it becomes hard for you to what? It becomes for you, it becomes hard for you to, to memorize. Because 
things go over your head a lot of the times because your mind is preoccupied. You're tired. You're busy with other things. You are busy with other things. And I myself, I've seen that with my own kids. They can memorize faster than I can. We do things together. We initiate a memorization of something together. And they always pass me. Because, and they're playing when they're memorizing. They're jumping around, they're laughing. I've, I'm putting everything, every effort that I have in doing it. And even sometimes I do it without them knowing. While they're asleep, I, I, I memorize even more. So when I come to them, I don't... I know, they were sleeping all last night. And they, they only done it when I was doing it with them. And now that they're back, they still have it stronger than I do. For, so then memorization at a young age and studying when you're young is very, very, very good. وَلِذَلِكَ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ used to say تَعَلَّمُوا قَبْلَ أَنْ تَسُودُوا Learn before you become leaders. Learn, beca- be- learn before you become in charge of things. The reason is because once you become in charge of something, responsibilities come with it. With power comes responsibilities. But when you're free, when you're single, when you're young, when you're, you have no responsibilities, you have no chores to do. Right now, a person who's got children, who's married, who's got kids, when they sit to memorize, they remember bills that they have to pay. They know that they're, they're, late, they're, they're late on this, they're late on that. They've got this letter sent to them. And this and that, their mind becomes preoccupied. And it's hard for them to memorize. Not that I'm saying you can't study when you're old, and not that I'm saying you can't memorize when you're old. All of that requires what? Hirs, hard work and effort being put in it. It's not, an ex- it's not a good excuse to say, I'm old, I can't memorize, and I can't learn. That's, uh, it's a fallacy. So a person shouldn't put themselves in that situation, to say that to themselves. And the Prophet ﷺ, at the age of 40 onwards, Allah told him to say what? وَقُلْ رَبِّي زِدْنِي عِلْمَ Oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. So when even you're old, 50, 60, you still have to what? Increase yourself in knowledge. And you still have to learn. But what we're saying here is that it's harder to learn when you're, when you're older. So the author here, the first factor that helped him to be able to write a book, and author a book at a very young age. And <coughs> he wrote, So the book he's explaining was when he was 26. So how old was he when he wrote? He was in his teens. As they say, he's 19, 18, something like that I was said. So 20, 21, some said. The point is that he was very young. So then he explained his own book when he was 26. So he must have wrote this book way before when he was 26. So the second thing that helped him is that these people were raised upon halal income. The food and the things that came into their household was halal. And when Allah Ta'ala, when you're raised with halal and you're nurtured upon halal and your income, the parents, what they give their children is halal and it's pure. The child, his knowledge, his understanding, his comprehension becomes pure and clean. Okay, these are factors that help learning. We all know the long hadith of the man. This man was a traveler, but the Prophet told us in this hadith what? This individual was a traveler. He called on to Allah after enduring so much pain and suffering. He said, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Allah tells us, وَمَطْعَمُ حَرَامُ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامُ وَغُذِيَ بِالْحَرَامُ His clothes is haram. وَطْعَمُ His food was haram. وَغُذِيَ He was nurtured. He was raised upon haram. Then the Prophet said, فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِهَذَا How can this person's dua get accepted? So when the child, the parents say, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامَا This dua won't be accepted. هَبْ لَنَا Oh Allah, bestow for us and our children, our offsprings, a good, this won't be the reason. So that's why you see a lot of gang, you see a lot of thugs on the streets who are Muslims. Because maybe, if you look at maybe, not all of them, but maybe, is because of the income that wasn't good. And we know that the Prophet ﷺ told us in a hadith, that when the person, the Prophet ﷺ, what did he tell us, tell us in the hadith? The Prophet told us in the hadith ﷺ that when the two parents, the mother and the father, are having sexual intercourse, if they say in their relationship, they say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, Allahumma jannibna shaytan, wa jannibish shaytana mimma razaqtana, 
Oh Allah, diverted from shaitan and divert from shaitan from our offspring. The Prophet told us in the hadith that shaitan does not come close to those children. It doesn't affect them. It doesn't harm them because of the dua they made. Some people may make that dua, but it doesn't get accepted. And it becomes the re... Why is it not accepted? It's because they are مَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامُ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامُ وَغُذِيَ بِالْحَرَامُ فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِهَذَا And you all know the famous hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, you know, uh, uh, Jibreel came to me, Jibreel came to me, and he blew into me that a person will not die. A person will not die. حَتَّى تَسْتَكْمِلَ أَجَلَهَا A person will not die until they... A person will not die until they finish off the risk that was written for them. Then what did the Prophet say after that? But you fear Allah in the provision that you're looking for. You fear Allah. And beautify the money that you're trying to make. You're not gonna listen, you're not gonna the risk that's written for you, you're gonna have that. Are you with me? What's written for you, the risk that's written for you, is going to come to you regardless. But فَاتَّقُوا fear Allah in what you try to bring. وَأَجْمِلُوا فِي الطَّلَبِ And make sure what you're trying to gain is good. Well, like is a story that was mentioned. It was a man. It was said that he fell into a well. He fell into a, a well. And when he fell into a well, it said that he was probably there in the well for maybe a day or two. Okay? And a group of people saw him in the well. So they got him out of the well and they said to him, SubhanAllah, they took him out. He survived. When they brought him out, they said to him, what is it that happened to you? What is it that took place? What happened to you? So he told them the story and what had happened to him. And he said to me, I, I said I was in this well for a very long time. So they gave him a cup of milk and they said to us, can you show us how you fell in? I mean, this doesn't make sense. So he had his cup of milk. When he drank his cup of milk, he stood over the well to show them how he fell into the well. He fell into the second time and he died. Now if you ponder and you think, this man only came out to drink that cup of milk and that was what was waiting for him. That was the only thing that was waiting for him. Allah writ for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah writ for him to come out of that well, to survive a day or two, to drink that cup of milk that was written for him. And then it was time for him to go. It was time for him to go and there are many stories things like that that take place so it's upon each and every one of us to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the provision in the rizq that we try to give our children if we're trying to raise the next ulama the next mujahideen the, the next atqiya abrar barara then we need to fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in that which we bring to our households and that which we provide to our children and how we raise our children Oh Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make us those who leave behind righteous children who stand up for your religion, defend your religion, implement your religion internally and externally. So the author rahimahullah, those factors helped him. The third thing that helped him was the bi'ah, the society and the place that he lived. The society that a child grows up in are factors that can help the child what? There are factors that help the person what? Factors that help the individual learn. And remember, when he the Shaykh Ta'ala, his household, his father died when he was very young, his brother raised him, Shaykh Abdul Rahman Nasir al-Sa'di, and his brother made sure he raised him correctly. Are you with me, brothers? Even that he was an orphan and he had no father, but the true reality of an orphan is not the one who loses his mother or father. As the poet said, "ليس اليتيم من مات والده إن اليتيم يتيم العلم والأدب." That an orphan is not the one who loses his mother and father. Really, that's not an orphan. The orphan is the one who miss who loses another two parents. What are they? العلم والأدب, knowledge and manners. If you don't have those two, then you're an orphan. Huh? Like the poet he said about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ذُكِرْتَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ you were mentioned in the Quran بِالْيُتْمِ as an orphan وَقِيمَةُ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونِ فِي الْيُتْمِ you were mentioned in the Quran as an orphan and the value of something is when it is what when it's unique when it's alone 
صح؟ If this piece of gold or this piece of uh, 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 this piece of uh, jewel is unique, it can't be found anywhere else except here, and it becomes uh, what does it get? The value goes up, right? وَقِيمَةُ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونِ فِي الْيُوتَمِ Without further ado, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to start this book بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ الْكَرِيمِ And this book, as you can see, inshallah ta'ala, and you're going to see, it was a question that was put to the author, rahimahullah. Uh, or maybe it wasn't, and it was somebody who, or, or it was him initiating an answer, that of, that of a question that was raised to him by the surrounding. Like the scholars, they author for two reasons when they author. One is that they either are, somebody comes up to them and asks them a question or a matter, and so they respond to it and they give them uh, a book. And as Ibn Taymiyyah did in his Aqeetul Wasatiyah and many other books, uh, Ibn Hajjah rahimahullah, um, did as well. Al Hafid al Hakami rahimahullah in his Sulam al Wusul ila Ilm al Usul, his own teacher Abdullahi al Qarawi rahimahullah requested from him. سألني من لا بد من من امتثال سؤله الممتثلي. When he says that I authored this because somebody who I have to respect told me to author this, referring to his own teacher Abdullah Al Qarawi رحمه الله. شيخ الإسلام تيمي author واسطية because a man from the land of واسط came and asked him about عقيدة أهل السنة والجماعة عن فرقة ناجية. And شيخ الإسلام responded by writing the book العقيدة الواسطية. Also his own book مقدمة في أصول التفسير. He wrote it because it was a question put to him. He mentions it. Uh, many of those scholars are like that Second way is that The scholars author a book Because of the situation of their time They see that something is going wrong Amongst the people Either the people are deviating From the correct path of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah Or the people are starting to take Permissible things that are Unlawful for them <coughs> So Without having to be asked The situation asks the Sheikh and the Alim To say something about this because it's an obligation on, upon the people of knowledge to what? To convey that which they know, as Allah says in the Quran. Uh, Allah take a, took a covenant with the people of knowledge, what? To convey the message. So, this hadith of the Prophet, sallam, this involves if he's asked by a person. And it also involves if the situation asks for it. مَنْ سُؤِلَ عَنْ عِلْمٍ فَكَتَمَهُ أُلْجِمَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِالْلِجَامِ مِنْ نَارِ Doesn't necessarily only mean that if the, a person comes and asks you this question. Because this hadith says what? Anybody who is asked a question and does not respond to that question, does not give an answer to that question, he will come the day of judgment uh, with a, uh, a braid in his mouth, the braid of the horse. Is going to be placed in his mouth uh, the day of judgment from fire, from the hellfire. Because he didn't answer the question which he was upon him to answer. So the author, Rahimullah, authored this book, is going to start by saying, فَسَائِيَ فَيَا سَائِلًا عَنْ مَنْهَجِ الْحَقِّ He's going to say that. The one who's asking about the correct methodology. Um, so I say, inshallah ta'ala, أَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ الْكَرِيمَ أَنْ يَنْفَعَ بِهَذَا النَّظْمِ وَشَرْحِهِ I ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala that he rewards the individual who wrote this book, which is Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasir Sa'di, and I ask Allah, He rewards me who's explaining this book and gives me a tawfiq and sadad, and that He makes uh, and forgives me for my shortcomings. Uh, also, Allah wa Taala rewards each and every one who is listening and trying to benefit from it. From it. Um, inshallah. To anyone who inquires about the correct manhaj, seeking to tread the straight path genuinely and be happy. فَيَا سَائِلًا عَنْ مَنْهَجِ الْحَقِّ يَبْتَغِي سُلُوكَ طَرِيقِ الْقَوْمِ حَقَّ وَيَسْعَدُ The author, Rahimahullah, Sheikh Abdulrahman Nasir al-Saudi, who started by saying, فَيَا سَائِلًا عَنْ مَنْهَجِ الْحَقِّ يَبْتَغِي He started his book with a... Nida calling And this calling my beloved brothers and sisters Is a nida'un nasihul mushfiqul murabbi It's the calling of a person who's concerned A person who's a true murabbi A cultivator He's an individual who cultivates What did he say? فَيَا سَائِلًا عَنْ مَنْهَجِ الْحَقِّ 
What does he mean by that? Ya man yuridu li nafsi. Oh, you who wants for himself. Man hajil haqi, the true path. And you're looking for tariq al mustaqim. You're looking for the straight path and the hajil al qawim. The path which in it is what? Salvation, prosperity, success, happiness in this world and the hereafter. The one who's looking for this. And manhaj al haq. Manhaj means what? At tariq al bayin al wadah. Manhaj means. The path which is clear and clean. And it's the path that every single one of us has to follow. In our aqidah, in our ibadah, and in our khuluq, our manners. So the book is going to deal with the correct path, not just in aqidah, not just in ibadah, but also akhlaq and manners and etiquettes. يَبْتَغِ سُلُوكَ طَرِيقِ الْقَوْمِ حَقًّا وَيَسْعُدُ um, وَيَسْعَدُ sorry. يَبْتَغِي You're looking for two things. The author mentions here. يَبْتَغِي He's looking for two things. The first one is سُلُوكَ طَرِيقِ الْقَوْمِ You're looking for the path of the people. What path on which, which people? The path of the Sahabas and the Tabi'een. The path in which Allah, the ones who Allah said about them was سابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار وال... والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن The ayah Allah tells us والسابقون الأولون The first early generation From who? المهاجرين well, Ansar, the Muhajirin are the people from Mecca. Ansar are the people from Medina. Well, Ladina Tabaruhum and those who followed them in good be ihsanin. So the the qawm here is Tariqun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the path of the Prophet. Was Sahabi Hil was Sahabati Hil Kiram Sah and the path of his noble companions. Because they're the ones whose iman has what? is high and is reached up high, right? وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الْأَوْزَعِيُّ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ He said, اصبر نفسك be patient upon and make your soul patient upon على السنة upon the sunnah. وَقِفْ and stand حيث وقف القوم the place where the people stood. القوم again is being used here. Just like Sa'di used it. يَبْتَغِي سُلُوكَ طَرِيقِ الْقَوْمِ صح? Imam al is Imam Ahl Sham. He's saying to you, Isbir nafsaka. Make your nafs patient. Ala sunnah upon the sunnah. Because why is he saying be patient? Awza'i, why is he telling us to be patient? Because holding on to the sunnah is hard. It's actually something hard. It needs patience. Sah? Isbir nafsaka ala sunnah. Be patient upon the sunnah. Waqif and stand. حيث وقف القوم where the people stood القوم من الصحابة والتابعين والتابع والتابعين وقل بما قالوا and say what they said وكف عما وكف عما كفوا عنه and hold back from that which they held back from وسلك and tread on the path take the path سبيل السلف كالصالح take the path of your pious predecessors فَإِنَّهُ يَسِعُكَ مَا وَسِعَمْ Because it suffices you that which suffices them. Allahu Akbar. Abu Qasim Hibatullahi Alla Laka'iyu brings that statement of Imam Al-Awza'iyu in his kitab شرح أصول اعتقاد أهل السنة والجماعة The first volume, page 150-154. Also Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he wrote to a man and he said to him, Salamu alaykum. أَمَّا بَعْدُ to proceed فَإِنِّي أُوصِيكَ I advise you Allahu Akbar Pay attention to this He's sending him a letter Look at the advice that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is saying Are you with me brothers? He says to him Salamu alaykum Peace be upon you أَمَّا بَعْدُ to proceed فَإِنِّي أُوصِيكَ I advise you بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ to, be, to come with the taqwa of Allah وَالِقْتِصَادْ فِي أَمْرِهِ وَاتِّبَاعِ السُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ I advise you to come with the taqwa of Allah wa ta'ala and iqtisal in that. Moderation in that. 
sunnati rasulih and that you follow the sunnah of his messenger. وَتَرْكِ مَا أَحْدَثَ الْمُحْدِثُونَ And that you leave off the newly added, in, uh, the newly added uh, matters that were added by the innovators. بعدما جرت به السنة that came after the sunnah وكفوا مؤنته and leave off its pain and its headache hardship ثم علم نو and نو لم تكن بدعة know that there is there was never an innovation قط whatsoever إلا وقد مضى قبلها ما هو دليل عليها know this that there is no innovation whatsoever Except before it came, evidences. And lessons are in it. Upon you is to stick to the sunnah. With the permission of Allah, it is laka ismatun. This is your savior. This is your salvation. فَإِنَّ السُنَّةَ إِنَّمَا سَنَّهَا مَنْ قَدْ عَلِمَ مَا فِي خِلَافِهَا because the sunnah was placed by the one who knew the opposite of the sunnah. Min al zalari, the opposite which is what? Mistakes and shortcomings and faults. Wal humq and dimwitinness. Fardilin farba. So farba. Ha farba li nafsika bima radiya bihi al qawma. Be pleased with yourself. That which they people, meaning the Sahabas and Tabi'een, were pleased with themselves for. فَإِنَّهُمْ عَنْ عِلْمٍ وَقَفُوا وَبِبَصْرِ النَّا فَذَكَفُوا They stood in a position with knowledge. Their matter was based upon knowledge and insight, and they withheld based on that knowledge and that insight. And he says more statements. So the first thing was what? Salika, suluka, to take the path of who? Suluka tariq al qawmi haqqan, to take the path of the people. Are you with me, brothers? And the second one was what? Wa an yas'ada fi dunyahu wa ukhrahu. Which is? Tariq al qawmi haqqan wa yas'adu, to find happiness. Are you with me, brothers? Suluka tariq al qawmi is the means. This is the wasila. Taking the path of the companions and the pious predecessors is the path. Wa yas aduna is the ultimate goal of being happy. So once you take the path of the sahabas and tabi tabi'een, you become what? That's where happiness comes from. And this statement of the author, he took it from Ibn al Qayyim's kitab, Sawa'iq al Mursala. Ibn al Qayyim says, فَهَا هُنَا أَمْرَانِ There are two matters. طَرِيقَةٌ وَغَايَةٌ طَرِيقَةٌ وَغَايَةٌ There's a path and there is a goal. فَالطَرِيقَةُ الْهُدَى The طَرِيقَة is the guidance. وَالْغَايَةُ السَّعَادَةُ وَالْفَلَاحَ And the ultimate goal is the happiness and the prosperity. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْلُكْ هَذِهِ الطَّرِيقَةِ Anyone who doesn't take this path لم يصل إلى هذه الغاية. He will not attain this goal. So if you don't take the path of guidance, then you're not going to gain the goal of happiness. Sometimes what happens, my beloved brothers and sisters, and this brings me back to the statement of who? Al-Imam Al-Awza'i. What did he say? He said to be patient upon the sunnah, right? One of the reasons why a person needs to be patient upon the sunnah is what? Is because a lot of the times you feel lonely. You feel like everyone else is, you're deserted, you're, you're, you're alienized in the community and you're pushed to the side. And this is one of the reasons why you still have to be patient. And Ibn al-Qayyim gave you a good advice. In his book, Madarij al-Salikin, the first volume, page 22, he says, قَالَ بَعْضُ السَّلَفِي Some of the Salaf said, عَلَيْكَ <laughs> upon you is بِطَرِيقِ الْحَقِّ Upon you is the path of the truth. Upon you is the true path. وَلَا تَسْتَوْحِشْ And don't find loneliness. لِقِلَّةِ السَّالِكِينَ Because there are little who are treading on that path with you. وَإِيَّاكَ And upon you is. وَطَرِيقَ Sorry. وَإِيَّاكَ And be aware. 
وطريقة الباطل أن path which is falsehood ولا تغتر and don't be deceived بكثرة الهالكين don't be deceived by the large amount who are destroyed don't be deceived by them look what he says to you وكلما استوحش استوحشت في تفردك فانظر إلى إلى الرفيق السابق whenever you find loneliness so are you with me brothers Whenever you find loneliness, فانظر look at إلى الرفيق السابق your previous friend, the companions, the تابع تابع. Look at them, observe their biography. وحرص and strive على اللحاق بهم. Strive to catch up to them. وغض الطرف عن من سواهم. And turn a blind eye to anyone other than them. فإنهم لم يغنوا عنك من الله شيئا. Because they are not going to benefit you. In front of Allah, the day of judgment. وَإِذَا صَاحُوا بِكَ If they call you out, those, in, those, those ones who are deviated and are not upon the sunnah, if they call to you, فِي طَرِيقِ سَيْرِكَ Whilst you're on that path, whilst you're on that path of guidance, فَلَا تَلْتَفِتْ إِلَيْهِمْ Don't look at them. Don't give them attention. فَإِنَّكَ مَتَلْتَفَتَّ إِلَيْهِمْ Because whenever you look at them, أَخَذُوكَ they will, they will take you وعاقوك, and they will make you deviated. They will make you deviated. The author said something after this. What did he say? He says, القومي, The path of the people, right? He's added a very important point here, which he said, حقن. Why did he say حقن for? Why did he say حقن? Because many people... Taking the path of truth for them is idia claim. It's just mujarrad idia. It's just a mere claim. They will say to Allah Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, "Ana ala aqidat Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Ana min ahli al Athar. I am from, you know, I'm, I attribute myself to Taifat al Mansura. I attribute myself to the Salaf. Calls himself a Salafi, and he gives himself these titles. 